this video is so ridiculous, you're going to assume it's fake. I mean, it just seems too insane. The creator of Sonic the Hedgehog is going to prison. And in my opinion, for the stupidest reason ever. But let's talk about that. What's up, Gabers? Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, real quick, just in case you aren't aware of it, this is Yuji Naka. In a lot of people's minds, he is the person that created Sonic the Hedgehog. He did the programming for the original games. He used to be one of the heads of Sega, just working at Sonic Team. He is a designer, a producer, and a video game programmer. He made a lot of big, influential pieces of art that people still love to this day. I mean, he is very, very critical to creating the blue blur. But later in life, uh, he started to work on some games that kind of sucked. He did good stuff. He did, uh, you know, things like Nights into Dreams. And then he did Balan Wonderworld, what is often considered to be the very worst game ever made. This game is something you give to people if you don't want them to be your friend anymore. That is legitimately how freaking terrible this game is. Well, currently, he is in court and he has just pled guilty to insider trading. <laughs> so basically what happened is that <laughs> it's so silly. Basically inside of secret meetings held at Square Enix, they would take him into a room and say, Hey, you're Yuji Naka. Here's what we're currently working on. Do you want to try and get in on this? This is like, you know, the major next projects that we're going to be releasing to obviously get his feedback. Maybe he's going to program it. Maybe he'd be an advisory role. Well, the two games that apparently happened were when they were making Dragon Quest Tact, which is like a tactics game, and Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier. With both of these, what happened specifically is they said, hey, we're making these mobile games. Here are the studios that are going to be helping us with it. And with both of them, he secretly went and invested about $20,000 into each of them and ended up making $145,000 profit. What he did, which was 20 million yen. Uh, basically, he put the money into it. The games are announced publicly the value of those companies skyrocket because they're obviously partnering with Square Enix. And then suddenly he sells that stock and makes some big buku bucks. Now, this is extremely illegal. This is super illegal here in the United States. It's illegal in Japan because it's called insider trading. It means you're using the secret information you have to make a bunch of money that a typical random person couldn't make. Well, he admitted there is no doubt that I learned about the games before they were publicly announced and I bought shares in them. Yuji Naka admitting to insider trading charges at the Tokyo District Court. Now, the freaking case is ongoing because he has not been fully uh, tried in that they have not given him a sentence. They have not told him how much time he's going to spend in prison, but I mean, the Japanese legal system is pretty dang harsh. Um, there is extremely, extremely low crime rates in Japan. And part of the reason for that is because if you get busted for stuff, they really do lock you up. They put you away for a long time as a sort of symbol. Everybody else, don't make the mistakes that this guy did. So the fact that he is just admitting the guilt outright, props to him. Maybe, maybe they'll give him a mildly reduced sentence. But I think there is a good chance he is going to be spending years in the slammer. But additionally, I'm kind of curious personally how this is going to affect his legacy. You see... In Japan, in the past, there have been a lot of examples where a person is busted for some sort of crime, sometimes as minor as drug possession or something like that, and they completely remove every piece of art you have ever been in, including major video games. A recent example of this is when Judgment was about to come out. Uh, it was out there, it was on store shelves in Japan, one of the lead guys caught sniffing a little bit of expensive nose candy and then suddenly 
bam, they literally took the games that he had already been in off the store shelves, re-edited the entire game with a different face actor, removed all of his audio dialogue. I mean, the, the links they went to to fully remove him from the game, I am kind of curious if they're going to do that with Yuji Naka. And what I mean by that is that a, a lot of his games obviously are already out. Uh, if you play anything like Sonic Generations, a lot of his like big uh, classic compilations things, you know, not just like uh, Sonic Origins and stuff like that. Games that are a mix of older Sonic games. The ending credits say this is the game series made by Yuji Naka or special thanks to Yuji Naka for you know making Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3. I am a little bit wondering if they're going to digitally remove him from the credits of all future Sonic games. If if everything that's out, they'll take him out of the credits. All future games, I, I bet you, I bet good money, they're going to remove his name from any future Sonic projects, even if they're already deep into development. This is freaking wild. Because let's face it, the real reason that Yuji Naka should be in prison is because of Balan Wonderworld. This game is a sin. This game is easily one of the worst things I've ever played in my life. It's like somebody tried to make a torture device and it just happens to be wearing a top hat. I am still just absolutely stunned, but I have to laugh because uh, imagine getting arrested for Final Fantasy VII, The First Soldier. The First Soldier, okay, it's a Final Fantasy Battle Royale, so it was never going to be that great, but it's baffling to me that the game is already dead. He invested in that company, made his short-term profits, took that cash out, and now is going to prison after the game is already dead. This man took the biggest L of all time for a Final Fantasy Battle Royale. Man, Yuji Naka, this has besmirched your legacy. And I feel bad about it because honestly, I do think a lot of people sort of deify game makers. People like Hideo Kojima or, you know, people like uh, uh, freaking Nolan North. I don't know. People, the director of Starfield, uh, freaking, Ken, no, Ken Levine is Bioshock. Oh God, I'm spacing. Oh God. Todd Howard. <laughs> Can you tell I didn't sleep much last night? Todd Howard. But these are still normal people. Even if people are making the biggest, coolest games, they still make human mistakes. And in this case, yeah, uh, he made the biggest mistake of all. Goodbye, Yuji Naka. I hope your sentence isn't too particularly long. But man, that is a, uh, that is a hell of a mistake to make. Well, what do you guys think about this? Are you curious about how somebody could take such a fat L on Final Fantasy The First Soldier? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Also, off topic, I've been playing Octopath Traveler 2. Holy heck, this story is fantastic. Dang! People say, oh, it looks retro. It's not worth 60 bucks. This game is worth 60 bucks. It is absolutely worth every penny. I'm going to binge the hell out of this. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.